Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolo Tech. We're going to compare the Atrix 4G to the iPhone 4. Now both of these are flagship devices for Apple and Motorola and AT&T. This is kind of the premier Android phone on AT&T where the iPhone 4 is Apple's only top-of-the-line phone or current gen phone. And let's go ahead and first talk about design. Now Apple makes beautiful products. Not really too many people dispute that. It's kind of few and far between. Uh, Motorola makes really solid, sturdy, long-lasting devices. Some pretty, some not, some more functional than others, but let's talk about them up front. Obviously, they, they're fairly similar. They both have forward-facing cameras, a screen, and some buttons along the bottom, or one button in the iPhone's case. On the side, on this side, we have our volume rocker up down, our vibrate switch here, and nothing else. On the Atrix, we have our micro USB to charge or data transfer, and an HDMI out, and that allows you to mirror the screen on the TV or play HD content through, this, through the connector. On the bottom of the phones, on the iPhone, we have our dock connector, our microphone, and speaker. So if you've got a speaker phone call or whatever, it comes out one of those speakers, and one is the microphone. On this side, we have a volume rocker on the Atrix, and we have our SIM card slot on the iPhone 4, or if you have a Verizon iPhone, there is no SIM card. On the top, we have our sleep-wake power-on button on the iPhone, our noise-canceling microphone, and our 3.5mm headphone jack. The Atrix has the 3.5mm headphone jack, along with our power sleep wake button which also serves the function of a fingerprint reader to unlock the phone and then we have our noise canceling microphone up here now I have swapped the back on the back of this iPhone it's not technically removable and it's got some wear on it now uh, but it's just a different back so that's not the standard normally it's glass this is aluminum on the back of the Atrix we have a 5 megapixel dual LED flash uh, camera that also takes 720p video. The iPhone 4 has a really good or known to be very good 5 megapixel camera with a single flash and also records 720p video. The speaker phone for the Atrix is on the back right here. So let's look at the front. Both of them have a forward-facing camera which both are the uh, run at about 0.3 megapixels or VGA resolution. We have our earpiece for listening to calls and again our, our home button on the iPhone and four capacitive touch buttons on the bottom of the Atrix. We have menu, home, back, and search. One thing the iPhone doesn't have is a back button and I know a lot of people want that but this is going to be a straight-up comparison between the two and, and how they work. Now let's talk about the specs a little bit. The specs on the Atrix are, are very impressive and that means it has a dual core processor, has an NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, which runs at 1 gigahertz on each core. So it's very fast. The iPhone 4 has the A4 chip, which runs at, well, a lot of people say it's around 800 megahertz, but it's capable of a gigahertz in the iPad 1. So we really don't know for sure what the processor is running at, but we do know that it's, uh, it's fast enough for the phone. The iPhone 4 screen is known for being really good. It's the retina display, which means you have basically four pixels for every one pixel on a normal display. However, that's not really true when you're talking about the Atrix next to it. This has a 640 by 960 resolution, while the Atrix has a 540 by 960 resolution, but a slightly, slightly larger 4-inch display. They're both capacitive touchscreens, and both are very responsive. Although I haven't really seen a screen as perfect as the iPhones as far as response wise. Very close, but it's it's really up in the air at this point, and they're they're so close it's it's hard to tell the difference. Now the Atrix has one gig of internal RAM, while the iPhone 4 has 512. That seems more than enough for the iPhone 4 and other uh, other phones released with the processor inside the Atrix also use 512, but in this case we've got one gig, and that's for some capabilities we'll talk about later. Now, let's go ahead and turn the phones on. Now, obviously, the iPhone 4 runs iOS, 
and currently the version is, I believe it's 5. Point th or I'm sorry, 4.3 on the iPhone 4, while the Atrix is running Android 2.2 Froyo. I was doing some benchmarking on a different video. The home screens are very different. And for those of you that don't know Android very well, Android's fully customizable, while the iPhone basically allows you to have icons for your apps or put them in folders like this. And you can pick them that way. Now, for some people, this is better. For some people, the Atrix is better with Android. Android is definitely more customizable, and it's more fragmented also. This has Moto Blur on it, and that's Motorola's kind of social overlay interface, and the interfaces differ between different uh, Android phones. However, that doesn't make it a bad experience. It just makes it maybe the menu buttons different. Maybe there's more social icons, that sort of thing. But we're really not here to talk about Android or iOS per se, just that how fast they feel and, and what's different between them. The Atrix supports Flash, and Flash will allow you to use everything on the web, uh, games, that sort of thing. Everything runs pretty fast because we have a dual core processor. If I hit the menu button or the really the, the app button that brings you into all the apps, you can see here's all the apps and everything's fluid. All the apps are located here on the iPhone. But everything seems to be fast and responsive. We have multiple home screens on, on the Atrix that we can customize. Here's some news things I've put there along with Twitter and Listen. Um, here's some social things, Twitter again, and these could be contacts that you could quick call or text, and music, that sort of thing. Everything is up to you when it comes to Android. On the iPhone, it's all uniform and very pretty looking. We have our iPod here for music. This is a, a new album from Thousand Foot Crutch. On the, on the Android side, we can have the same album, but not everything looks as pretty. And that may not matter to some, it may matter to others, but just throwing it out there that things are definitely a little bit different between the two. Here we have the same album, but just kind of displayed differently. There's our songs with the album art. Here's our songs with the album art. So it's just a little bit different experience. Now, overall usability of the phones is pretty much the same. They're going to both get you through a day on battery. The battery in the Atrix has actually a larger capacity than the iPhones, I believe. Uh, but because of all the social apps and things running, along with uh, what you may be doing, can really slow down or, or kill the life in your battery. And the iPhone is known for getting very good battery life. The battery life in the Atrix is said to be 9 hours of talk time with 250 hours of standby, while the iPhone 4 has about 7 hours of talk time but 300 hours of standby. They're so close as far as overall life and what you get out of them, I really don't think you're going to have a problem getting through a full day with either of them, unless you're really heavily playing games or something along that line. Let's talk about the differences in their capabilities. The iPhone 4 has the ability to have a ton of different apps, just like the Atrix in the Google Store, or the Google App Store, but there's a lot of interconnected things, uh, like iTunes and that sort of thing. There's a whole kind of ecosystem that goes with iPhone and Apple products. You have iTunes, love it or hate it. Uh, it works great. It may need a redesign. You know, some people argue it's slow, that sort of thing. It, it works well for what it does, and it's all interconnected, and that's kind of what we're focusing on here. Uh, we have a remote app, so if you have an Apple TV, this will con control that with no problem. Now you can do things like that with the Atrix, but everything seems to be a little bit easier to do. Uh, I would say this would be your Windows PC, where it's more customizable and, and easy for a lot of people to understand, where the Apple... Uh, or iPhone is more Mac-like and kind of just works. Now there's an argument there that I'm not going to go into, but that's kind of the difference between the two. The remote will just allow you to control the, your media, you can kind of stream to it. There's a lot of different advantages back and forth I could go over all day, and you could make a point on each one of them. So we're really not going to do that. Now the one thing that the Atrix does that's very interesting 
and very compelling for some is this is basically a computer in your pocket and what I mean by that is you have the ability to buy a dock that this plugs into that you plug into your monitor keyboard and mouse and this kinda turns into a full web browser computer that gives you access to things such as apps for Facebook and and uh, any web page with flash anything you name it and, and you can pretty much do it with this not full applications per se, but you can use web apps and things, Google Docs and all that, no problem on the Atrix. You also have the ability to buy a laptop dock and carry it on the go and kind of have that sort of experience as well. So it's very compelling that way. Uh, you also have an HDMI out that allows you to mirror the whole screen or play HD video through the HDMI port straight to your television or monitor with HDMI. Now you'll be able to do that in coming updates as far as mirroring and things I believe on the iPad but I'm not so sure on the iPhone and some of the notifications were taken right from Android that they put on iOS 5 and that's not a bad thing because that's where Android excels with notifications you have a notification light on the front that will blink when you get an email or you get an, uh, a, a Twitter update or whatever you've set it for uh, text voicemail and it's very good that way there's so many different things back and forth that we could go over. Navigation is fantastic on any uh, current Google or Android phone just because it's built in with Google Maps and has some really good turn by turn. On the iPhone you can download apps that are fantastic. It's just a never-ending battle between the two of how good they are and that's really what makes these phones what they are today is you have competition and competition makes both of these phones an excellent choice if you go Android you're not gonna go wrong if you go iPhone you're not gonna go wrong both are being well supported nowadays and both come out with new updates quite often some more frequent than others uh, but they're both being supported and I don't think you're gonna make a bad choice on either of them one last thing is 4G now the iPhone 4 is not 4G yet where the Atrix is 4G well, it's capable of 14.4 megabits per second down. So 4G is questionable as far as true 4G or what Verizon calls 4G with LTE. 14.4 uh, isn't slow, but it's not as fast as 20 down people are getting from Verizon. So it's really up in the air right now with 4G. Now iPhone it will probably come out with a 4G device eventually, but no one knows when that will be. So there's really so many different things going back and forth. I find that a lot of people that have iPhones know people that have iPhones and use FaceTime with them and that sort of thing. Or people that have Android phones um, tend to be a little bit more technical a lot of the time or have uh, some different needs as far as customization and that sort of thing. But basically I could go on and on and on about this and... Uh, at this point want to just ask you if there's anything specifically you want to know between the two phones that you want me to compare just let me know and I'll, I'll try and answer those questions that you might have for me other than that thanks again for watching thanks for subscribing as always this is Aaron I'll see you next time